Welcome to CFI's Scenario and Sensitivity Modeling course. This is one of the most important courses in financial modeling. When you're trying to value a company, you're not just going to arrive at one single number that it's worth. There's a range of values because there are assumptions that are required in a model and those assumptions can vary. The value of the business can vary. And in this course, we're going to show you how changes in assumptions result in changes in value for a company. We've got two main topics to cover in this course scenarios and sensitivity. With scenarios, we're gonna look at discrete examples of what we think will happen in the future, or cases. We'll have a base case, a mid case, an upside case, and we'll run those through the model. Then with sensitivity analysis, we'll look at how changes in assumptions result in changes in value. For example, if interest rates go up slightly, if prices decrease slightly, what is the impact on valuation? We'll show you how to link all of this up in Excel, connecting it with formulas and making it dynamic. To complete this course, you'll be watching all the video lectures. You'll see us demonstrate to you step-by-step -step in Excel how we perform these types of analyses, and then you'll complete it on your own with your own model. We'll also be giving you assignments, quizzes, and a test at the end to make sure you thoroughly understand all of the concepts. This course covers three of the most important concepts in CFI's Financial Modeling and Valuation Analyst Program. We look at Excel skills, financial modeling skills, and valuation. By completing this course, you'll not only be moving through the certification program, but you'll be much more confident in performing Excel modeling and valuation of a business. Let's compare and contrast scenario analysis and sensitivity analysis. In scenario analysis, we change multiple inputs at once. In fact, we have an entire case built that changes a whole series of assumptions all in one scenario. In sensitivity analysis, however, we are changing one assumption at a time and seeing how sensitive the output is to a single change of an input. With scenario analysis, we create a story or a detailed scenario about the future. With sensitivity analysis, there is no story about why inputs go up or down. We simply want to understand what happens if they do. Scenario analysis typically represents several business cases, a base case, an upside case, downside case, and other scenarios that can be modeled discreetly. Sensitivity analysis is used to determine which assumptions matter the most. With scenario analysis, each of the scenarios will be compared to each other and the pros and the cons will be weighed against each other. Management may actually use these scenarios as operating cases for running the business. With sensitivity analysis, we are performing a type of risk assessment where we know which drivers have to be carefully managed and which ones can have a big impact on the value of a business. In this course, we're going to implement both scenario and sensitivity analysis, and hopefully it'll become very clear to you what each of them is used for and why they are important. Let's look at why we would perform scenario analysis. There are really two reasons, when we're valuing a company and when we're conducting business planning. So let's look closer at business planning. Imagine you're on the FP&A team at a company or the corporate development team. You need to create operating scenarios for the company. This includes budgets and forecasts. That flows down to planning for resources, including people and capital. And it all rolls up to corporate and business level strategy that the executive set for the company. They can't just plan on one scenario. There's typically at least three and maybe more scenarios that the company is planning around. Now let's look at valuation. When valuing a company, there are many different views and opinions about the future of the business. So it's important to model different future cases of the world and to tell different stories about how the future of a business could unfold. Now we're gonna start digging into it in Excel. Let's take a look inside the setup of the scenario and sensitivity analysis model. Here's the cover page, and we can press control page down to navigate to the DCF model, where we're gonna build out scenarios and sensitivity analysis. And if we go over one more tab, we can see here some additional assumptions which will form the three scenarios we're gonna model. Let's go into the main model, the DCF and sensitivity model, 
Let's open up all the sections. And you can see that currently this model only has one set of assumptions. There's only one scenario. This is classic in a standard model, but we're going to take it to the next level by adding multiple scenarios and giving the user the option to choose between which scenario is running through the model. So these assumptions here feed the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, supporting schedules, etc. And all those sections feed into the DCF model, which give us the intrinsic value per share for this business and the IRR of buying shares in this company. Then what we're going to do is try to understand how sensitive this equity value per share really is. We're going to try to understand what would happen to the share price based on different revenue growth rates and different exit multiples. We'll also look at changes in revenue, cost of goods sold, discount rate, and exit multiple that will all feed into a tornado chart down here and give us a visual representation of how sensitive the share price is to changes in underlying assumptions. So we've got a lot of exciting stuff to cover together in this course, and we're going to go through it with you step by step as we start building out scenarios and sensitivities. Let's talk about how to properly structure this model to handle scenarios. Typically, you would add scenarios at the end after your model is already built. And your intuition may be to actually rename this as one of the cases, perhaps your base case, and then insert additional cases above or below it. But what we actually want to do is turn this into the live case, since it's already linked up to the formulas here. You can see if we go into these formulas and press F2, they are directly linked to this set of assumptions here. So if we move this to another area, all of the references are going to follow these cells. So what we should do instead is turn this into the live case and then insert three different cases above it. So what we can do is copy this section here. Just copy it and then insert the copied cells above. Let's do that again. Let's copy and then insert them above. And we're going to do it yet one more time. So now what we've got is one, two, three discrete cases and a live case. And the way we've set it up now, when we change this section to be formulas, and add our choose function, it's not going to interfere with any of the linking that we've set up previously. So we can delete everything in here. These numbers don't impact the model. And eventually we're going to delete these and replace them with formulas. We can go over to our additional assumptions section and let's select all of the data that's contained here. We can select starting with the titles and going all the way down the three cases, we can go back over into the model and paste them. And then we have the scenario names like base case, downside case, upside case, and then we have our live case. And we're going to delete these hard coded numbers here and replace them with formulas. And that's going to be the real work now of setting up these scenarios in our model. Now that we have the structure in place, which is an area to create choose formulas and then three discrete scenarios to choose from. We're also going to create a switch here where we can select the live case. So let's type here live case. And on this cell to the right of it, we're going to have a little drop down menu where we can choose between the cases. Let's flip back to the additional assumptions and we can create a little bit of extra information here where we will have cases. Let's bold it. Let's add a border under it. And then we're going to type case one, two, and three as our three choices. So we're not going to give them names. We'll just give them numbers since it's a very straightforward example where we have base case, downside case, and upside case. And in this cell here on the, on the ribbon, we're going to go to the data ribbon. So that's Alt A V for data validation and then V again 
for the data validation. And what we want now is in this cell, instead of allowing any normal value, we want to allow a list to be displayed. And the options that are contained in the list we're going to display are located right here, option one, two, or three. So we press OK. And now we have this drop down where we can select option one, option two, or option three. And since this does contain a drop down feature, let's format it to be a little bit different. Let's go in and change it to have a dotted line border. And we'll give it some very light shading so that it's sort of obvious now, hopefully, that this is where we choose our scenario. So now we have that switch ready to go and we can start linking up the scenarios. Let's link up the live scenario using the choose function. So if we type choose, the way this formula works is that we tell it what choice number to make. That's the index number here. And the choice number is contained in this drop down list. So we refer to that cell and anchor it with F4. Once it's anchored with F4, we then tell Excel which are the various options it can choose between. So it has option number one here, comma, option number two, comma, option number three. Those are the three revenue choices that it has to make, close bracket, and press enter. So you can see here that it's at 10%. Let's change that to be black font color now. So we can do Alt H F C and change it to be black. Let's play with this now and see how it's working. So what if we go to option number two, the downside case drops to 5%. What if we go to the upside case? It jumps to 12. So we can see that it's linked up properly. And in case number one is 10%. We can fill this to the right with control R. We can copy it and the entire section below, and then paste special, alt, es, formulas, and enter. So what that does is it pastes everything down, preserves the formatting, so we will have to change all of that to be black as well. But then let's make sure it's picking up the correct line items. So here's rent and overhead being properly picked up. Here's the tax rate in 2020 being properly picked up. So that's great. And we can actually see now if we want to see the effect of the whole scenario flowing through, we can see scenario one here. Then we can load scenario two. And then we can load scenario three. And we see how they flow through the income statement and the entire model. The only other thing we may want to do, since we have a bit of a dashboard going on up here, we could also add off on the side here the share price and we could link to it in this cell to the right and if we scroll down to the intrinsic value per share that's running through the model that's really the final outcome of the entire model that's really the end point if you will so we can refer to that and then let's scroll up and let's just format it so that it's a currency let's press control one number currency. So we'll include a dollar sign, even two decimal places and press enter. So, and let's, let's format it as being gray as well. So we can see now the net effect of each scenario. Scenario one, when everything's taken into account, that's our base case. This company has a share price of approximately $35 in the downside case, the share price drops to 29 and in the upside case, it gets as high as $43. So now we really have a great sense of how these different cases are impacting the net result of our model. Let's start testing and analyzing some of the results from these scenarios now. If we scroll down to the live case, one thing we can do is a bit of an audit to make sure we have full peace of mind that is working properly. Let's start with the revenue growth assumption in 2018. And let's click on formulas, trace precedence. If we scroll up and see what the results are, we notice that the precedents are 
the revenue growth in the upside case, the revenue growth in the downside case, and the revenue growth in the base case, plus the drop down list. So that's great. We can see that everything's connected to this cell. Let's test another one. Let's test cost of goods sold in the following year. And if we scroll up, we see that it's picking up cogs in each of the three scenarios. Plus, once again, it's linking to the switch. That's perfect. Let's just keep going down and trying a few more of these. Okay, and we can see now that they are all working. That's phenomenal. Let's just try these last few ones and scroll up. So all of them are picking three choices and all of them are referring to this cell. That's great. We can also go to this cell and click trace dependence. And we should see every single cell in the live case be referenced to, which it is. So that's great. We can see that this thing is connected to everything. Let's remove the arrows. Now let's try going the other direction. Let's take the revenue growth rate in 2018 and trace dependence. So it jumps down to revenue. That's perfect. Let's press it again. Of course, it drives down into the balance sheet and it actually drives forward into the next year because each year is a year over year revenue growth rate. So let's just keep on pressing it and see where it ends. And the final ending point, if we scroll up to the top, is this cell right here. There's nothing that comes after this cell. And that's exactly what we should see. Because this is the share price, this is the end point of the model. And it's referring down to, in the DCF section, you can see it's flowing through the entire valuation section. It's referring down to the equity value per share. And then from here, it goes back up. We can see this line that's being traced all the way up like this. And finally, it ends right here. So this is fantastic. Let's remove those arrows. It's all flowing through perfectly. Now let's try another type of little sanity check here on the income statement. Let's first switch this back to case one, since that was our starting point. Let's copy these values here for revenue, paste them special here, alt -E -S -V for values, so that we have them as a comparison point. So this is the base case. These numbers will not change in the model, but let's select this and go to the downside case. So we can see a direct comparison of what those revenue figures look like. And then we can go to the upside case and have a look at what those figures look like relative to the base case. So that's just one little example of how you can paste sections of the model as values and then compare the base case to each of the other cases separately. Let's continue scrolling through the model and let's look at the balance sheet now. Let's see how these different scenarios impact the balance sheet. We might want to look at the ending cash balance in 2022 and let's see how it compares. So we can see how that number moves around in the different cases. We might notice that case one and case two actually have a very similar ending cash balance and only case three really breaks away with a materially different ending cash balance. Interesting. We can look at cash flow from operations and see how that's impacted by the different scenarios. And then scrolling down, we may want to look now at the share price. And if we are in our base case here, we can copy this value, paste special as values. Let's add two decimal places just so we know it's exactly the same. And then we can do a side calc where we take the current case divided by the base case hard-coded value minus one, and then Alt HP to make that a percentage. So let's just watch the different scenarios flow through and see the percentage change. So in the downside case, it's a 17% downside. And in the upside case, it's a 25% upside. Now let's switch this back to the base case and we can delete that little side analysis unless that's something you would want to leave in. Hopefully by now you have a thorough understanding of how scenarios flow through a model. Continue learning. Join CFI today.